So it's 2.01 p.m. Um, Thursday. Uh, Thursday. 16th of August 2017. So, yeah. <sighs> anyway, um, I'm going to the um, job agency to the to see the accounts. I ate my breakfast and my veggie stew earlier in the day. So I have all my food out of the way. It's like a chore. Okay, I gotta eat this food. That's how I created it. I have to get this diet out of the way so I can prepare myself to go to the uh, job agency because I find that stressful. Hopefully I can... I just don't feel like talking, I'm very tired. I took one of those Ativan things yesterday because that usually puts me to sleep like oh but I don't want to get addicted to that because it's not good benzodiazepine yes I don't want to get addicted So next week I've got to go do three things. On Monday I have an appointment with my psychologist. And on Tuesday I've got to see the person at the local Catholic church. And after that I have an appointment with my GP. So you can fill out that form uh, she gave me, this counselor. And on, uh, what else do I have? And on Thursday, I have another appointment with her, this uh, employment agency counselor. So I've got three, uh, three days I have to go out. I got up at 5 a.m. today. I got up at 5 a.m. yesterday too, around. So that's good. Yesterday was not a good day. Yesterday was not doing well. But today a little bit better. I did a little bit of voice practice. It was good. Let's just start back on that. Mm. Feel a bit low. I feel a bit low. I'm taking 50 milligrams of that mood stabilizer, but I don't feel much of a difference. I don't know. Was that first week a placebo effect, or was it something real? Well, I'll be going up to 100 milligrams in about. Oh, two weeks to a two weeks in a bit. So we'll see what happens then. Should do the get that um you know that sponge and washed it. 
Haven't washed it. Oh, this is your link. I just found out this uh, through Pinterest. This um, really nice retro, retro clothes, you know, from the 20s to the 60s. They even sell jewelry and all that. Oh, 20s to the 70s. 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. That was very nice. So. I might link that below. <coughs> We're leaving at 2.30. What is it? We're leaving at 2.30. Okay. Oh, I ate the food, all my food, so this might be a bit... Mm. I haven't been... Um, you know, I've been... Today it was the first time I ate the veggie stew in, in a while, so... Things aren't where I would like them to be, but you know, I have been doing these affirmations and that didn't really help because when I write down, oh, I am this, I am that, it's actually changing my mindset. It's like, yeah, I am that. I <laughs> so the, the, the morning I do the affirmations, I write them down. So they really do help. They are working. The simple thoughts like I am healthy or I am, I don't know, I'm a nice person. <laughs> so just writing things like that, they really help. Because then I can, I don't know, they do something. It's like, I don't know what they do, but they just really, they sort of, I don't know, like it's like, oh, I am this person. So it's like, yeah. So they, do, they seem to be helping. And I do my gratitude. I'm grateful for lots of things in life you know I'm grateful for a house to live in clothes food water clean water and uh, you know, help uh, you know for my transition health care and you know lots of, lots of things I'm grateful for yeah, so I did that oh sorry I'm just but it's still a struggle it's still a struggle, but I am, uh, yeah, I am, I am chug chugging along, <laughs> chugging along, and uh, yeah. Uh. Uh. I'm checking. I'm just, I haven't worn this top in a while, and also like wearing a, a skirt, like this long thing, which I haven't worn in a while. So I thought I'll mix it up a bit. Okay, that's what I was, you know, one of my affirmations. I'm feminine, so that's giving me confidence. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna wash my hands. Uh, Another one of my affirmations was, uh, I'm going to become an avid reader. I want to get back into reading things. I got this book, The Dialectical Behavior Therapy. Oh, they've got lots of, hmm, I, I, I need to do these things. I need to do these things, but you know. It's difficult. It is difficult. It is a challenge. Living life is a challenge. It's a challenge. It's difficult. 
It is quite difficult. Probably because I don't have any real, like, I don't, I don't have much of a social support, so... Well, I'm trying to get it, you know, I have therapists, now I have, I'm seeing some, I'm seeing my psychiatrist, and, you know, I have my psych, oh, jeez, that's so I'll just do it in my fingers, it'll be better. So I need to build up my social support system, because it's very difficult to live on your own, like, I mean, not only on your own, because I, I don't live with my mom and dad, but I feel very isolated. Like, my inner emotional life is very, uh, I can't talk to him about it, about how I feel and all that. And that is important. Well, like, how can I get up? Oh. I didn't do my hair. Usually, I wanted, uh, you know, a bit. My hairstyle really sucks. Oh, it really, really sucks. It really sucks. I shouldn't say that. I am going to... I am happy with my hair. <laughs> I am... Well, I am working... I am happy with how my hair is growing or something. Uh, as a uh, patient, eat that veggie stew because it's got so many good nutrients in it. Eat the veggie stew every day, do your exercises, um, have a positive mindset, and, and you know, and then you, you know, life will be a little bit better, I think. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have an open mind when I go, when I, you know, into my inquiry into Catholicism. I'm gonna have an open mind and, uh, you know, take it day by day. Usually, when I start out on something like this, I, I rush into it and I'm like, okay, I want to be a Catholic, and now I'm just gonna take it a little bit like. Approach it slowly, and not, don't rush into it. And you know, take it day by day. See how it goes. And uh, hands all right. There's something sticking out there. I made it worse. Anyway, so. He has that bald spot over there, but it's like, it's getting better, but it's still a bit, mm, what can you do, you know, I wish I didn't lose all that hair, but you know, I'm not happy with the hair I have, oh, that's, that's, that's affirmation, I am happy with the hair I have, and I hope that it'll grow and I will get a better hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's better. Uh, right. So I'm just gonna get ready to leave and uh, go to the go to the um, uh, employment agency. So it's 3.55 p.m. I'm in the car and... Uh, so that was a... That was a pretty good session. That was very good. Um, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so I, I've, I, I've, I had... I realized some things about myself. And no one really put it to me in these terms. So I have a fear of success. And this is why I... Uh, something is stopping me from pers pursuing these goals or whatever. And that's because I don't want to be in the spotlight. Because I'm so used to being invisible. Um, so I, I don't want the spotlight. I don't want the responsibility. So that's my fear. 
fear of success. Another thing is, uh, you know, because if you succeed, because I'm so used to being like downtrodden, unemployed, uh, you know, and to be someone who is actually succeeding at life or whatever, that would be that's going to be a different experience, and I'm not used to it. So I'm, uh, you know, I, I don't know what that's like. So it's like a change to my identity, and so I'm afraid of success. I'm also afraid of failure because if you try at something and you fail at it, it's a devastation, right? It's a painful feeling. So I'm I'm also afraid of failing. So instead of instead of fee, instead of allowing myself to feel the loss, I don't even try. But by not trying, I still feel that pain or something it's just, this is why I'm so depressed is because I've uh, you know ultimately you know I, I'm sort of like disconnected from myself um, this you know so I've been basically trying to stop myself from feeling these feelings and uh, anyway but, but the way we talked about it was very it was like a revelation to me oh, now I know why I'm like that because I have a fear of success. The fear of success is actually much more, much more of a bigger fear than the fear of failure. Because failing is normal, right? People try at something, they fail. You know, that's like a normal feeling. But really, if you, if you put things off, procrastinate, put them off, put them off, put them off it just builds up. And then depression and anxiety, she says, it's like, it's like when it gets to a point when it starts impacting your life, that's when it becomes a problem, right? And it's certainly done that to me because you know, I'm, uh, you know, I've withdrawn from life and so, so I don't feel like I'm alive. So I can't even feel happy. I can't even feel sad, you know? Because I'm disconnected from myself. Instead of instead of feeling happy, instead of feeling the pain of losing, I you know I live in this kind of existing place. <sighs> you know, but uh, you know, it's uh, this is the first step. Naming my no, uh, you know another thing she said like, you know, we're talking about like how, what what motivates someone to do something, and for me I said, well I want to prove other people wrong because they said I'm a failure and all this, and then, and then we talked about that like how like if someone did, is it like is that pride or is it something else and. She said, it's not really pride like if if you live in a let's say you grew up in an environment and then people said you won't amount to anything and then you that motivates you maybe it's anger because because ultimately you're a human being you don't like people you want to be respected right so if someone talks badly at you puts you down you're like well it it, it hurts you you know because you you innately feel like no I don't deserve to be treated like this because you know deep down inside you are worthy so so when people so when people you know use these negative experiences like people putting them down or whatever to motivate them to you know prove the naysayers wrong as well as prove to them that they can do it ultimately the reason that motivates you is because deep down inside you know you are worth it and what these people are saying about you is actually wrong um, so I feel like I've got that in me because you know I feel like I feel like the reason I've been even though I've been uh, life's been a struggle for me you know I, I drop out of courses and you know all of that um, I still keep on coming back the reason I keep on coming back is because I know I am 
somewhere inside me I feel like I deserve to be treated with respect because I am worth it. I am I am worthy of you know not being talked down to. <laughs> I'm worthy uh, somewhere inside. It's not like a pride thing, it's more like a basic no, you're, you're a human being. You don't, you, you know, some something inside of you is like, you, you know, saying like, you know, it's it's something. It's hard to, to explain what it is. It's like the human spirit or whatever. I don't know how to explain it. Um, it's not necessarily pride because pride sounds arrogant. This is more like. It's not about arrogance, it's more about coming from a real place inside you and a real authentic place inside of you which says no, I am worth it, you are wrong, I don't deserve to be treated badly, disrespected. So it's an inner kind of thing. So anyway, so this is a pretty good conversation. I wasn't expecting to have this conversation, so this is really good. Show. I had, you know, you know, some sessions, you know, I don't want to like, you know, I don't know if I don't know if future sessions are going to be good, but you know, this, today was, yeah, because I was feeling kind of low, and you know, yeah, so it was good to. I wasn't expecting it, but it was good.